The uh, fossil fuel industry, coal, oil, and natural gas, provides 80% of the world's energy, and energy is the basis of human flourishing and of our standard of living. And it's oil is what provides over 90% of our transportation, both on land and in the air. So uh, I think uh, the problem with this uh, demonization of the fossil fuel industry and the oil industry in particular is that the CEOs of the big oil companies don't do a very good job of defending their own industry and what it provides the benefits and the, and the, uh, um, the amazing benefits it provides uh, for humankind. You know, uh, wherever people's views are on this subject, the fact of the matter is that, that, that because we have established such a strong position in fossil-related fuels and fracking and everything that goes along with it, uh, energy prices are much lower than they otherwise would be. We're less vulnerable to energy disruptions abroad, OPEC, what have you. So it has strengthened our position to abandon that at a time when, when those prices have come down and given America an advantage. Uh, it, it, it seems like a silly business prospect, but what did you make of that? I, I think that the, uh, 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 many of the people in the political life don't understand where our wealth comes from and the fact that the United States is now the world's energy superpower. Uh, we have uh, the world's largest uh, reserves of coal and we have uh, tremendous uh, oil and gas reserves because of the shale oil revolution. Uh, which uh, is is something that government didn't do and government doesn't control, and yet a lot of uh, elected officials say we need to get rid of fracking. Uh, well, if we get rid of fracking, we're going to see uh, six to eight dollar a gallon gasoline probably. So, um, for the former vice president, he's locked into something that, to be fair to him, <laughs> is almost ancient news. It's been a long, long time since he had any relationship one way or the other with fossil fuels, but they're trying to pin that on them. I get that. It's a political campaign and all that. But um, the new wave of Democrats is swearing it off and saying that's not the way to go. Uh, there are others saying all in on everything, all, all in on all types of energy uh, uses. Uh, where, where do you think this ultimately goes? Well, we've got a long campaign ahead of us, both for the uh, Democratic nomination and, and into the general election. It will be interesting to see uh, how the public reacts to the idea uh, that we should uh, somehow swear off uh, the sources of our 80 percent of our energy and we should all be willing to pay uh, thousands of dollars uh, more per year for for transportation and for our electric uh, uh, bills in our houses. Uh, I, I, you know, I, people say that they want to do something about climate change, but they don't really see that they ought to be paying thousands of dollars a year, a year to do it. They, they don't see the benefit, the cost-benefit uh, ratio there. Yeah, it, it is a little, first of all, we, we look at through the prism of the, you know, decades ago when these were dirty and, 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 and pro problematic energy sources, uh, dramatically changed today, but uh, maybe we should be considering more all energy bets and not just one over the other, but that, that's neither here nor there at this point. Thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Neil.